Okay. So I'll, I'll go. Jada, you already got a few. Is there anything you wanna um, you wanna share? You wanna go? We can go. We can all the good. Yeah. Uh, the advantage of being a DJ, I guess. Oh yeah, I was at his house and he was going through. Man, he got he got crazy for days, man. It's like all those. We got many more, of course. Yeah, this is just the one that I want to share today. I got, I actually got more than I want to share, but we're gonna be here all night. Well, I'm gonna have you share again, probably, because uh, this record was lagging on me, so I'm I'll just not start it. But it's all good for the podcast. So here we go. All right, I'll share a few of mine because I didn't have vinyl back in the day, but I had cassette tapes, right? So I got a few I could share. You guys already remember this one. Um, it's kind of because of the green screen. Let me see. Um, it's not going to, oh, there we go. Dr. Go Dre. Dr. Dre. 2001. And the next episode. Next episode. That's when uh, Eminem first actually came out. You know, that's when he introduced the world uh, or introduced Eminem to the world. You guys might remember this, the Lost Boys. I was showing Jonathan this one earlier. Yeah. This is, uh, Renee and, uh, you know, all kind of classes on this one. But this. Le Lexus, Jeeps, and Coop. Yep. Oh yeah. Freaky Ta. <laughs> yeah, Freaky Ta. And um, I'll cens censor this part out, but you guys remember Onyx. This is like one of my first ones with Slam and all those on there. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. Yep. Let, let the boys be boys. Let yeah. the boys be boys. And I got uh the Far Side. You guys might remember Far Side. She keeps on passing me by. Oh yeah. Okay. Then I had um. You guys might remember from the Bay, right? So I had RBO Posse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't give me no <laughs> yep and also uh what is this one this one had um more bounce bounce to this remember bounce to this and um bluebird on my shoulder <laughs> yep. you know you guys gotta go back and listen <clears throat> to that, of course i can't say the lyrics um and then i got you might remember uh the dog pound dog food oh yeah yep. most definitely when they, when they were like kicking that uh buildings in new york <laughs> Right, <laughs> that was cool, right, with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and then uh, rest in peace, right? But I still got my old DMX. Aww. This is a rare one, because it's not even on eBay. I guess everybody are buying them up, but it's a rare cassette that I, you know, I still hold on to it, because it, it still holds value. Mm. And, and then the one that taught us uh, Cash Rules, you know, which is also the legendary oh, Wu-Tang Clan, right? That's what this uh, campaign is about. Basically, if, once you understand money, you no longer let it rule you. And then I even had some, uh, you guys might remember, but I got the E-40. Which one's that? Oh, um, Federal. Yep, Federal. Uh, with Captain Save Them, though. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And, uh, bring the Yellow Tape. Oh, man. We used to actually ride to this one in junior high. I remember I was in seventh grade and Jennifer Harris and Tahir. We used to bump this in the car. <laughs> this one <laughs> and also the Tribe Called Quest, like the uh, both Tribe Called Quest, you know, the Low End Theory and also uh, Midnight Marauders. Um, but all of those are classics, and I even got the Mary J and Method Man. You know, that's the single. Mm -hmm. I remember I bought this single. But um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I used to, I used to, I used to sing. I used to sing that to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> that was your pickup line, John. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. And then uh, I used to put like my hoodie on because he was putting his hoodie on all the time. Right. And then and then he had, remember he has that fake eye. The fake <laughs> the eye. Bug, yep. That bugs you out. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that that's a lot of uh, a lot of memories, but uh, yeah, Jada, go ahead, just share a few. I'm not gonna show every, you know everything else. I got a whole stack, but that's just a, you know a few things that trigger, help trigger the memories right there. Well, that's everything, really. Let me see who I can think of. Who's who you can think um, of? Whoever you want to talk. Um, to. Uh, you said RBL <laughs> Posse already. I'm trying to think now. Let me think. Um, when first, I was first, at Southern, first it was tape UGK. or first CD that you bought. Oh, yeah. UGK. Oh, okay. UGK. Ba oh, from back in the day, it's gonna be like MC Hammer, three five seven. You know those those people. Right. Um, like I said, Easy <clears throat> rest, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Well, you re you remember you had that poster of uh, Houdini on your wall. Remember Houdini? Oh yeah, One Love. That was my song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Friends. Yep. Um, and I used yeah, to I love them. <laughs> LL Cool J, of course. Oh, I, I always my... say that's my boy. My wife is in love with LL and Connie. Oh, I love LL Koji. Oh, there you go, Ami. Baby knows. LL Cool J. Cool J. Ladies love Cool James. Yes, yes. <laughs> he was my one of my favorites. Um, who else? I love Method Man. 
Oh yeah. Um, I remember me and Paris went to Up and Smoke tour, and yeah, Up and Smoke. Yeah. They were there. Um, Paris, you remember who else was there at that concert in Sacramento? Paris is on. Um, let me see. Is she still on there? Oh, I don't see her on. She might have got. Oh, me. she must have dropped off. But yeah. we had went in Sacramento. That was one of the best concerts we went to. It was so fun. Um, out in Sac, huh? Out in Sac. Um, that, should, that, should, that, should, that should be next week's topic. Best concert you've been. To. Oh, man. Yeah, I've been to oh. a few good ones. Yeah, I've been to a few. Uh, E-40, we saw him up in Reno <laughs> oh, on the yeah. fluke. We went, and it was, the tickets are probably like $20. When we saw him, that was like in 2014 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing him. I think it was on like Willow Pass Road or wherever, where we used to work at Bass, Bass Tickets. And he was performing late night. I think, uh, I don't know who I was with, maybe George or somebody. But he was actually out there in Concord. And um, it was like a little low-key spot, him and uh, probably Be Legit, you know, the click. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the click back in the day. They, yeah, that's before they really blew and got big. But, uh, man, he's 40. He's still doing it. Yeah, yeah. After all these years, he's still relevant and making, you know, and helping others. That's what I like. Yeah, right. And, of yeah. course, you can't forget Too Short, you too know, from short. the town. Still doing it. Yep. Too Short still doing it. He's still uh, doing it. You know, keep bringing in the youngsters. How old is too short? Like 65 now? Yeah. <laughs> like 50, 52 probably. Still doing it. Wow. <laughs> He's, still blow- it He's still blowing that whistle. <laughs> <I'm> still- <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jonathan, I can't stand you. <laughs> oh, man. Too short is a legend, though. Him, you know, everybody from Oakland, you know, like, um, uh, I think last week I was talking about, like, Spice One. Oh, yep. The area, and um, even uh, Mac Dre from back in the day, you know? Oh, yeah. Yep. Those guys. Yep. yep. Uh, sure was. The loonies. People may not even remember them, like Dre Dog. He was out of San Francisco. Right, right. He was underground. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. What about you, Ramon? Any any uh, influences from hip-hop or other music influences? Anybody? Man, when you guys were sharing those uh, tapes and CDs, I, I was just, I just reminded myself, like, Wow, it's been forever. Am I that old already? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, yeah, like, for sure. Like, for my case, like, I've learned, I've listened to hip-hop a lot back then. Um, the only bad part about it is I don't really remember those names. Right. And I just kind of, like, remember them as I go along. Mm-hmm. Um, I do remember guys like uh, Dr. Dre, uh, Eve Forty. Um, some I, I love to listen to back in the day was uh, LL Cool J. And Vanilla Ice. Right, Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice yeah. Baby, yeah. <laughs> and I listen a lot, actually, to uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, yeah. They oh, still yeah. Doing it. oh, yeah. They're still doing it. Yeah. Especially- so it was, I, oh, I've always loved the hip hop in the 90s because I thought that the lyrics, like the song itself, was, it wasn't so much about people speaking so fast or be able to sing it through, but I always loved the context of the message that they were delivering. You know, I think there's always something powerful to take away with. Like, I guess the most notable one would be um, Changes by Tupac. Right, right, right. And I always love, like, every song seems to deliver some kind of message where if you don't listen carefully, then you wouldn't really get it. Oh, you know? And that's why it, that's what it really hit me. That's what I love about hip-hop. Um, I'm not a big fan of hip-hop these days. Maybe I just... I'm not that familiar with the art- artist these days. And besides some of the hip hop I'm listening to right now, like the lyrics are just like, it's the wow. same line, but literally like a hundred times in the song, you know? <laughs> so so it's, not like, it's not like back in the day where people had to exert a lot of effort to be able to like, deliver some sort of message and be able to share, uh, express their feelings. So yeah, that's my uh, take about hip hop. Nice, nice. Yep, you're right on over with that. Newer, newer uh, you know, this newer hip hop, is, is, it takes some adjusting. You know, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, they they keep they keep repeating some body parts like a hundred times in a song. Like, do we really need to know what it's about? You know, yeah. Right. So the industry's changed a little bit, you know, but that's why we keep these uh, memories because we could always go back and relive those moments. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Well, mine, mine would be mm-hmm. Drew Down. Drew Down, of course, cousin. <laughs> yes, 
and that's my influence. And I would say three times crazy, the loonies. Oh. I would say ludicrous. Luda. <laughs> Outcast. Oh, definitely. I used to have a friend that looks like uh, he's a Filipino guy, uh-huh. but um, he braided his hair and he looked like Luda. Luda. <laughs> <laughs> He used to get into the club too because he looked like Luda. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah, Luda. He's still on Instagram. He's still doing uh, music too, so he's still out there. Yeah. Oh, he's an he's an actor now too, right? Yep. Uh, he's yeah. in Hollywood, getting his money right, getting his money right. Uh, what about uh, cousin Tiffany? You got any uh, influences you want to share, cousin Tiffany? Oh man, there's so many. You guys named them all, but mainly uh, Tupac. That really stuck with me because. Uh, uh, when he was younger, we had a you know the uh, opportunity to meet him and just really uh, talk to him face to face and really got to know his struggle. So that kind of stuck with me as a youngster. Right. So where where were you guys when Hit Him Up came out? Oh, Hit Him Up. Oh. Machiavelli, right? That's the Machiavelli album. No, that's the diss song he did for uh, uh to uh. Well, to actually. To tell you, I kind of outgrew that once he got to getting into it with everybody. I was like, oh, no. But I still respected the struggle, you know? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'll fall back from that. <laughs> right. E-40, it's a lot. You guys already named a bunch of them, but just, like, their experiences in life, you know? Right. You can um, touch bases on that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely right. my cousin Jojo. Mm-hmm. Go. And he the had governor. a song. With, yeah. yeah, he had a song with Tupac right. and Richie Woods and Drew Down and uh, it was a lot. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. That's good. That's good. Uh Al, <laughs> Sister Al, you got anybody you like? I'm not sure if you're in the hip hop or anybody. Um, what's your style? What's your style? You know, I only dance when the music is on. Uh, <laughs> I know that. that's my Abby. <laughs> you just like support. But there's a lot of emotions when it comes to uh, hip hop. Really, I love the songs and their uh, the message that comes into with it. Uh, especially when I listen to uh, Eminem. Eminem. You know, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the message that he gives to his. Um, um, to his uh, daughter. Oh, Abby knows some stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The story. yeah. I love it so much. And of course, not to mention also Kanye West. Kanye, yep. mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kanye and I like, I, like, I like the message from Juvenile, the back, that's, back that ass up. Yeah, I like that message. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know what, John? Juvenile is a legend. <laughs> you have to say it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Juvenile, that's a, that's a real banger. If you turn that on in the club as a DJ, Jonathan know that. Man, every oh, club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Every time, hot, every time, I, play, boy, yeah. every time I play that, boy, yeah. oh, man, it brings down bring down the house. For Master yeah, that whole era was crazy. Forgot about yeah. Master P, but he's definitely in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, mm-hmm. um, anybody else like to share? I know Christovia, Tahira, Miss Bev, uh, Adrian on there. Christy's in there. Star on, Christy. Yeah, star. Um, you guys named everybody. I'm sorry. I was just definitely tribe called tribe called quest. I'm like, I really oh, yeah. love love them. Um, I'm a big comment, Talib Kwali. Um, I don't know if y'all know crucial conflict, but <laughs> yeah. um, smoking on yeah, yeah, and, and yeah that was my bar. thing. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> it was Chicago, I think. No, I, think I just love to be um Definitely is a, a big Tupac. I think Tupac was very um, versatile and he just brought different music. I love um, Tupac, but you guys mentioned literally everybody. But I, to make a comment, I just think the standards have changed. So I don't really listen to the rap nowadays. The standards has changed and it's like anything goes. Like real MCs, like they had a message. It was something behind the, the, the music had like substance. You know, you have some good rappers now, but I, don't, I ain't really feeling it so I don't too much listen to it. I, I really listen to a lot of like older stuff. Right, right. Now, so yeah, but you guys literally listed a lot of really influential MCs and rappers. Hey, hey, that's you know, as long as everybody feel like their name got out there, if there's anybody they want to add to it, 
Yep, yeah, I agree. I mean, definitely Tupac is definitely up there. But um, oh, yeah. Does anybody? Is there anybody? Mm -hmm. I nobody mentioned about uh, the king of the pop. No. Who? Michael Jackson. Yeah. Talk about when he sang the rap lyrics to uh, to you know, I'm bad. <laughs> Come on, man. We got to read. I'm bad. I'm bad. You know Take it. Take the floor down. <laughs> okay. But we or 50 Cent. You guys forgot him. 50 Cent. Oh. Well, you know, 50 Cent, he's still, he's still doing it, you know. But, you know, before 50 Cent, you know, I was going back even before 50 Cent came on the scene with, you know, up in the club and it's your birthday. <laughs> but, you know, it's not it's not that it's not a classic, but uh, it's definitely, it's, he's always going to be out there, 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know T40 got a few. T40, you there? She might be there. Or she might have stepped off. Or anybody else, Ms. Oh, am I on mute? Oh, I'm on mute. Oh, there you go. So I would just say Pac, Tribe Call Quest, and E40. Yep. Yep. So, I remember I remember in junior high, I think uh you had that Tribe Call Quest uh, low end theory tape. I don't know if you got that from Terry or somebody, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we were definitely um Tribe Call Quest. Yep. cats in high school so um that's you know i'm old school throwback right. definitely <laughs> have to have a message um to get to keep my attention right right you know i i think you don't want to put me on the tribe called quest because once i heard that i didn't let it go i think i took the tape from you right right <laughs> i was keeping that i was like man there's something unique about this <laughs> yeah, and it was, the younger ice cube too man I, oh ice cube was, was very, definitely yeah yep. Ice Cube back then, wow. Ice Cube is, uh, I think he's in the, um, I think he's in the Hall of Fame, right? He got a little star and everything out in Hollywood for movies, but also for music, I think, him and Snoop. Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't even mention Snoop, yeah. Yep, Snoop is definitely out there, you yeah. know, Dr. Dre. But yeah, um, okay, so Jonathan, do me a favor. Hold up those records one more time because it wasn't recording. I got to make sure you get on there. So oh, just, hold, okay, just go it, through them it. real quick. All right, hold on. Uh, let me change my background. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> so for anybody that got on late, John, he's a good thing. Craig Mack, flavor in your ear. All right. Um, Humpty Dance, Digital Underground. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric B and Rakim, Don't Sweat the Technique. Uh, no, no the ledge. Right, no the ledge. Uh, the Roots, coming to break you up. Yep, the Roots. Uh, Tribe Called Quest. Uh, doom, doom. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, the Blast. <laughs> Kuali. 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 Yep. And also Most Deaf, right? <laughs> oh, that's the uh, that's their other group. Yeah, that's Black Star. Jurassic Five. Jurassic Five. Yeah. Um, uh, Outcast. The way you move. I like the way you move. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dun, 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 dun. Uh, you, we all know this. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Broken glass everywhere. <laughs> the right. message. Yep. And then obviously James Brown. James you know, Brown. The most sampled drum beat ever. Hip hop. So <laughs> they still know. sample it. I still sample it too. Yep. Yep. So yeah. So that's what it's about. So you know, is you know, when people see this, like on the YouTube or whatnot. It's gonna help them go back, especially for the newer people or younger people, I should say. They'd be like, oh man, I didn't know they, you know, X, Y, and Z was, was doing it way back then. We forgot like people like Nas and some other people, but that's a good start. If anybody's looking to get into hip hop, just go back and watch this. <laughs> and then you can't go wrong. You know, that's pretty much what raised us, Buster Rhymes and all those guys. So go back and listen. And then that's how the music industry was shaped. But now the new age, it's like, it's not as much creativity. The beats kind of sound recycled and a lot of them same, sound the same, but there are a few artists out there now that's, uh, that's trying to do it. So, you know, it's no knock on them. That's just, they just don't, a lot of them just don't know any better, but they, they trying to get better at it. But it's so much money involved now. That if that's what's selling, that's what they're going to put out. Mm -hmm. That's just the way, you know, the music industry is right now. That's why we got to go independent. That's why we got Deacon John. We got Global G13. We got Old Wisdom. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> that's in the future. So, yeah. So how you guys feel about the state of as far as uh, celebrities, me and Jonathan and Jada, we were talking about different celebrities not really being fully prepared uh, as far as like um, I was reading an article with Black Rob who signed with P. Diddy. 
he didn't know any better, but he signed a contract and he was only getting twenty three percent of his uh, of his publishing. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, very little uh, for people that don't know. It's, it's not a good amount, but basically he passed away with no health coverage, uh, no insurance, and he was really struggling. He he actually died poor or like homeless. I think I think he was even homeless. He was on YouTube for mercy. Um, so how you guys feel about that? That's right. Mm -hmm. that's terrible oh wow and there's and there's a lot of them guys i mean um yeah we could name a few like uh dmx i heard he was he was kind of broke too oh i didn't know he was broke yeah i mean he's not that broke but he was like kind of getting there that's why he's still do doing shows and then uh a lot of this old uh um like de la soul de, de la, la soul um i think the first three albums they're they're not getting paid for that Oh, they signed the wrong. They signed with uh, uh with Tommy Boy. To, yeah, exactly. So they're trying to like uh, um, tell um, whoever the CEO for Tommy Boy to do the right thing, but like you know, it's, it's a business, late. I guess. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. then I heard um, Tarp Called Quest when um, when Scenario came out and stuff like that. They were still living in their mom's basement. Yeah. Because you know the deal that they get is is crap, pretty much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, brother, oh, uh, if if I can share my screen, I can share um. You know, like uh, uh, um, like the Black Panther, uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yep, go ahead. What happened, what happened to him? So right, so uh, it's, on, it's on automatic quick. share. Yep, there you go. All right, can you guys see that? Yep. So I actually, <laughs> since it's uh, April is a uh, financial liter literacy month, I actually posted this on uh, April fifteenth. Right. So um, let's see. you guys can see that, right? Yep, we can see it. So um, April is Financial Literacy Month. I wanted to share this article about Chadwick Boseman, Black Panther, and mm -hmm. the importance of having an estate plan set up. Unfortunately, Mr. Boseman's widow had to fight in court and file probate documents because he did not have a will and, and his last one and testament set. Right. So um, pretty much, I uh, if you click this link, it'll, it'll give you the whole article, but I broke it down for you guys. So on the third, uh, third subtitle, uh, the title is Marriage to Tyler uh, Simone Ledward. Mm -hmm. On the last paragraph, it says their last public appearance together was at the NBA All-Star Game in February 2020. And fortunately, because Bozeman died without a will, mm -hmm. Ledward is battling in court to protect her husband's assets that range in millions. So mm -hmm. pretty much it's because he didn't write a will prepare for his estate planning, um, the state owns owns his uh, assets. Right. So imagine that. So the wife has to fight for it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's why we gotta we gotta learn this and protect ourselves. And then on the eleventh subtitle, it says finances at the end of his life. On the last paragraph, it says, unfortunately, Bozeman did not leave a will for his wife and family. Because of this, Bozeman's mm -hmm. widow, Taylor Simone Ledward, had to file probate documents to have access over part of Bozeman's estate. The estate is estimated to be worth nine hundred and thirty-nine thousand. Wow. So this does not take into account his asset, life insurance, and four hundred and one k plans or other retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. So this is why we love this campaign, guys, because Sad. Um, we we if you're a member uh, on our on our campaign, we'll do the um, uh, uh, estate planning for you for free. Right. So that's why it's important to us to share this because it, it just doesn't uh, this 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 happens to like. Chadwick Boseman, right. and then uh, uh, Prince happened to him too. Same thing. Yeah. What and then the CEO for Zappos, the Asian guy here in Las Vegas, same thing happened to him. Right. And these are millionaires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then they just like procrastinated or like didn't, because you know, when we're alive, we don't think about preparing because we were like, oh, I'm I'm so cool, but we all know that you know you get into an accident or you know tragedy happens, and this is what happened. If you're not prepared then who we left behind i mean it's okay we're dead we're dead already right so we don't know but our wife our kids our family they're the one that's going to be a, a burden to right. you know take care so i just yep. want to share that yep i definitely agree it's, it's more like um just awareness because most people are like oh i don't really have much uh but really you do like if you have cars if you have any home <laughs> If you have different valuables, you want do you want the uh, the state to have to decide after probate and probate could take a long time. That could be a long process. They take all these fees out and then they give your family if if they're in the will, <laughs> they give your family uh, whatever's left. 
Um, but it's sad because you still you know the GoFundMe, you know, GoFundMe car wash. It's, um, it's just a matter of uh, waking up, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. Baba. And then, um, <laughs> since there's a baby crying, um, uh, 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 um, same thing too. Like, if your kids are minor, like for instance, my kids are ten, nine, uh, nine, ten, eight, and uh, six. Right. If my wife and I die right now. Um, the kids don't go to their grandmas or to my sister or to the next of kin. It actually goes to foster care. The state right. owns them. If you don't have that will, uh, 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 last will and st- testament stating the guardianship of your kids. Right. So, yeah, so that's another uh, info that I want to share, too. Yep. And just remember, if anybody's interested, that's with Militia. She's going to come in from Everest, but she shows us uh, the importance and how to set it up. Because a lot of people don't know how to set it up. Uh, but we do webinars and uh, those are our other business partners that we work with. So we can always use them as a platform and then get everything people need as far as the education. How do you do it? What's the cost? Because it's not that costly. A lot of people like, oh, it might be uh, too expensive. It's not that much, but it is the process. Some people sign up for it, but they never do it. (laughs) So you gotta, you gotta be a little bit like, okay, let me make sure I get this done, get it notarized. And now if anything happens, everything. (laughs) Yep. Um, Jod, anything you want to add on there? Um, I would just say, yes, it is, you know, I agree with everything is said, and it is um, sad that a lot of people, even be celeb, that how a lot of people are not prepared, and they don't think past them being alive because you're young. Um, Being in this business this short amount of time, I will say I have heard a lot and seen a lot, and it's it's heartbreaking sometimes, you know, because you... especially if you're telling people about, you know, do you have a will? Um, make sure, even if it's with your job, you know, it may not be that much because it's term and how long is it going to take to get the money? Mm-hmm. So the importance of having a nest egg, even though you have a insurance policy in place or a few policies, if, if, it's, if, you, if it's not, it may take some time for the policy to pay out. I'll say that. Um, and that's what I learned and why I got Everest, like you said, with militia. So that was very good information. Um, if anybody can tune in, I would advise you to tune in and listen to her presentation because with them, the money is available within what, 48 to 72 hours mm-hmm. of someone passing away. And that could be the cash flow that you need if you don't have a nest egg somewhere to bury your loved one until the money comes in, the, the life insurance policy pays out. Right. You can then that way you can use the life insurance policy to pay the bills, to keep your family afloat, to keep your car, keep your house, you know, that type of things to keep your family in the same uh, routine and not have to struggle. Mm-hmm. So yep. that's, you know, I would like for people to take that away. Right. Yeah, so my experience. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what it comes down to. Just planning ahead. Most people just don't, Hey, like they said, we don't plan to fail. We just fail to plan. <laughs> so if we can stop that and turn that around. Um, Cousin Tiffany, anything you want to say? Um, I have a lot to say. I just had an experience. I lost my 16-year-old son. That's right. And um, I was very unprepared. And my whole life was upside down. Mm. And I'm just so grateful for all the love and support from my family. And I'm still trying to adjust it so long with him not being here, but just financially. So I would, I would suggest that anyone that's listening, this is a great idea. And it, it'll have your life on track if you get this insurance, you know, because right. I'm definitely going to get it. Um, <sighs> no one expects the unexpected. Never. You never think, oh, this is going to happen. But it's just always good to be prepared, Mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, condolences, too. Thank you. That's a powerful, Cherry. Thank you, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to share something, too. I I totally agree. This is Christovia. Um, My brother had his first child at 20, and my niece was six months old, and she she died. She um, rolled off the bed into a plastic bag, and she smothered and she died at six months and no one thought 
to get a policy on a six month old baby. And we were just all devastated. And we, you know, right. we all had to do all type of things to try to get this money up to bury a six month old baby, you know? So for my family, that was, that was so tragic and it was just a lot, but that made us look at life differently and planning and making sure that you have things in position because when you leave here you leave that burden and that stress on your family you know you never know you here today and gone tomorrow but I mean that's just like she Tiffany said it's like the same thing with little bitty children and I got policies on my two babies one's 12 another one is, is nine but I was just like I didn't want to do it because those are my babies I love my babies I don't want the thought of losing them but Right. it's not me it, it's just me being smart and, and doing the right decision so knowing if anything happened I know that I'm protecting myself you know at least the less of the burden and stress that you'll have on yourself but even little bitty babies like that was crazy for us yep yep um you were exactly right nobody expects it it's basically a lot of people they're waiting but it's more of a gamble and if, if anything happens and they're they're not prepared for it that's when they feel the impact you know, so that's why we we continuously share, we continuously invite, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But all we can say is, hey, we invited who we can invite. <laughs> we share with whoever we can share with, <clears throat> keep it pushing that way. So that's why they call us campaigners. And we just try to build stronger families, because if, if you have access to the information and you utilize it, more than likely, it's going to create a, a stronger family and then overall stronger communities later, you know, because people have the knowledge now. Yeah, but without the knowledge, you're just going to continuously keep going because nobody can predict the future. We would like to, but uh, that's that's basically what coverage is for. And if you if some people's like, oh, it's too expensive or well, you get something very minimal, even if it's like a term policy, some people pay like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, go somewhere, get the coverage, get the knowledge first and then find some kind of protection for your family. And then you have a peace of mind, you know. But yeah, um, let me see if I could. Is there anybody else that would like to share? I don't want to skip anybody. Um, Thanks for sharing, Christovia. That was, yes, that was thank you for sharing that. Yep, and it's it's just a matter of um, of understanding. You know, it's a knowledge level, and and we're trying to get away from the ignorance level to like, okay, uh, if you know what's in your toolbox, now you can make better decisions for your family. But if you don't know what's in the toolbox, it's going to continue. So you just got to know what's in that toolbox and, and know how it works, you know. But again, it doesn't matter if there's six months. Um, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a baby on the way. I think um, I know a few people that's pregnant. But as soon as the baby is, is born, I'm already thinking like, man, make sure they got coverage. Because <laughs> that's uh -huh. when it's the cheapest anyway, when they're young. Because, <laughs> you know, right. over time, you know, if you try to get it when you're 60 and 75 and all this, <laughs> I'm like, man, you got all these other issues. It's too expensive. But you can still, right. like, you can still get it. But get it as soon as you can and then even start saving you know for retirement and things like that yeah. um once you understand how money works and you understand how you know the rule is 72 now you can start using money in your favor and you have more options later the kid won't be struggling with all this student loan debt and credit card debt yeah. um, so you know so the different. more you know the better so that's that's basically what we want to say uh just, just real quick brother oh yep go ahead <clears throat> so um just like christovia like i didn't know that i could get policy for my kid so we actually started them. Uh, uh, I got the, the IUL, Index Universal Life. Right. So the good thing about Index Universal Life is my three kids, um, nine, eight, and six, they're already covered. I'm only paying 50 bucks uh, a month for each. Oh, well, that's good. And then they're covered for 250000 right, mm -hmm. uh, each. And then um, uh, the good thing about IUL is I could withdraw it later if I, I need it for the college. And it's tax free, so you know that's right. Just, just another so, knowledge that I want to put out there. Right, it has a tax. So premium. whatever I put in, I'm actually saving it and I'm investing it too. Right, right. And I did the same for my boys too. Now, yeah. perfect. Yep. So once you understand that, yep. So, but again, we're all licensed to do it. So if you guys mm -hmm. need financial uh, advice or assistance, we can point you in the right direction. Jahada has how many states are you licensed? Is it four? Uh let's see. I'm in California, Texas, Louisiana, Michigan. Nevada and Nevada. Yep. Five. Yeah, five. And I'm, I'm about in five. I think Jonathan might have two, two right now, Jonathan. I got, I got three. So three. Uh, Nevada, California and Florida now. Right. And I think even, um, you got Abby and you got, um, I have two in Louisiana. Two in Louisiana. 
I have I have here and Louisiana. Nevada and Louisiana. Yep, and Ramon's in Canada. If you guys know anybody in Canada, Ramon get help with that. Uh, which ones you got, Ramon? I'm licensed in my province. I'm working on getting my license on other provinces as well. Right. So I mean, it's it's all through the U.S. and Canada. So it's it's really no no excuse not to have it or at least have access to somebody you can at least sit down with. Because I know I didn't know about it either, but I had to learn through like all these workshops. And then once I understood, that's why I had to get licensed. I was like, okay, now I have a license. So if a family needs it, boom, you know, you can do that. You know, you can write a policy. You can do coverage. You can do average. You can do term. You can do savings with IULs. You can do annuities and do rollovers, whatever it is that might help a family in the future, you can do once you have a license. Okay, and um, let me make sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Um, Jonathan, what was that other topic you had? I was looking for my list, but um, was there anybody, anything else you want to cover? I think, that, I think that's about it. That was it? Yeah. Okay, so you guys know about um, the importance of a will, um, estate planning. Uh, what we did was we have like with WSB, if you guys can see this, we have like workshops again, they give us a workbook. So each person gets their own workbook and you can sit down with your family. Like I even go over this stuff with my kids, um, but they have, you know, five different workshops. You do all these activities to where you actually write down your own, your own plan. So this could be confidential until you feel com comfortable enough to make a decision. And then also we give out these uh, saving your future books. If you guys, you guys might remember, but this is the X curve on the cover by our coach Swan Nguyen. Um, but basically it's the responsibility curve that should go down and your wealth curve that should build up over time. So if, imagine if each family member and each, uh, you know, pretty much each family has this kind of X curve. That's how we're able to turn, turn the economy around. So many people in debt right now, but basically they don't understand how money works. So that's our goal, this financial literacy campaign is we just go out, try to get them to form that X curve. And now they can actually retire, you know, with little, little, uh, you know, little savings to pass on. If anything happens, they can pass it on the, to the next generation. So it's all about giving back, but who's, who else is gonna tell us about it? Still to this day, nobody's approached me and try to tell me, hey, Omari, come learn this. I still haven't heard nobody. What about you, John? <laughs> uh, man, I, I'm, I got a bachelor's degree in business management and I didn't know about this. <laughs> they, don't, they don't really teach you at school how to manage your own money. You know what I mean? Right. 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 <laughs> so that's, that's basically uh, yeah. the foundation of the campaign. And even uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, it's just a matter of understand how the wealthy are making money work for them. Like uh, they invest in assets, but uh, middle class and poor people that don't know about money, we invest in liabilities. So we think like uh, certain things is going to bring in income, but really it's putting us further and further in the hole. And then they call it the rat race. <laughs> so you never get out of that rat race until you wake up, you know? So, you know, the goal is, you know, if you, if you already have savings, that's better than nothing like 401k. I know, hey, Ms. Bev, out there, right? you already retired. Ms. Bev was smart about hers though. So she already got her pension and everything. Ms. Bev, are you still there? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, you know, just explain how your money smarts came in handy down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, working at the same place for 32 years, it's very, it takes a lot of commitment to stay in one place because there's a lot of, you know, good, bad, and ugly, but I always knew that after, you know, I did my 30 years that I would have an income for the rest of my life right. and um, health insurance. And, and then I, I'm still young enough to go get another career, another job if I want to, but it's, you know, we also had a 457 at our job where we could have money taken out of our check and invested for us. I did that. So, you know, yep. yeah, working at the same place. A lot of people think that you don't, that you're, you stay in your comfort zone, but I did stay in my comfort zone, but I think it benefited me in the long run. So, right. you know, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to go from job to job to job to job and not have anything to show for it in the end. So, right. so I'm glad I stayed and, you know, put it with everything I had to put it with. It was worth it. Right. And uh, yeah. Ms. Bev, is at, she's at UMC, so a, a retired, or she was at UMC, a retired respiratory therapy or therapist. That's just, that's exactly what I do. That's how I met her. But basically, she's very money smart. And now she comes across people that want to retire, but they haven't been saving the same way that she was. So she was a very yeah. smart saver, very disciplined. 
Congratulations, Beverly. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we Thanks. need to talk, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, like, I, oh I want to do the same thing with you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, now Miss Beverly, do if someone were to um, start working at UPMC now, like Omar and you, do they offer the same benefits as they did? You can years still ago? work for thirty years and still get a pension. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's good. This is one of the few companies that's still doing that. Oh, that's nice. oh yeah. Yep. But, you just wouldn't believe how many people start there and they just get bored or, or they just don't love their job and they quit and go work somewhere else. They might make a, a few more bucks an hour, but they still, they can't retire as early. But a lot of people, a lot, not that many people actually go the distance. So most people re either retire when they're 60 because you can retire when you're 60 or they leave before that, but not... The majority of the people don't do a full 30 years because they just it's just hard to to work at the same place for 30 years i mean it's just not easy right so mm -hmm. it takes you know discipline and you just have to look at the big picture because i kept seeing all these other people retire and and then they never had to work again and they were happy and i'm thinking i want to be that person so i just kind of followed their you know oh, blueprint and you know did what they did but yeah they still offer the same thing yeah nice yep and the reason the reason why is the reason why it's important is uh, there's very, like as, as time goes on, there's very few companies that offer that same pension. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, I was going to say that. Yep. So it's good mm -hmm. that Beverly is able to get in. I know a few other people that's working on it, <clears throat> but um, overall, like when you job hop and you have all these other, you might have 401k and all these other plans, but it doesn't offer that pension payout. No. no. Right. So also. And plus after three years, three years after you retire, then you start getting cost of living raises. And so. So it's, it's, it's definitely worth it. Right. It is. It if is. you can get it, yeah. if you can get it. If not, you got to find yeah. home. You know, you got to yeah. be, uh, you know, your own, uh, I guess they call it um, like your own self annuity, your own self retirement mm -hmm. and, and to have your own income coming in in the future. That's what Sister Abby's working on, right, Sister Abby? It's definitely worth it to be staying with the MC. And that's what I called today with purse. I said, how much do I need to stay until 65? How much money do I have? To gain, so I know already what's the plan. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So for everybody else, you know, if you guys need uh, other options, you could always keep your job. Uh, you might be part time in a business, but you can always work on building up your asset in the business, maybe helping yes. families or whatnot. Um, and then at the right time, if you if you need that money later for retirement, you know where to put it, so it, it grows a little bit quicker. Um, uh, you have that plus whatever retirement you might have from a job. Um, just remember, I don't have the screen to share, I don't think, but uh, just remember on your, your 401ks, just double check to see if it's a Roth or a traditional, because uh, whatever you put in there, if it's traditional, when you pull that money out, that's when the tax is going to be taken out. So you kind of have to recalculate yeah. how much you might need uh, when you get ready to retire. So it's just good to know mm -hmm. up front, right? So by the time you get ready, you be like, oh, nobody told me. Uh, we try to tell you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a hard lesson sometimes, but uh, there's a lot of people that don't know still. So that's why we we still uh, campaign. Okay, but uh, yeah, I won't hold you guys up too much. Jonathan, you ready to do it? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try to get you guys off. Yeah. Unless I'm gonna give everybody a chance. Though, is there anything that anybody wants to add before we go into our our hip hop verses? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ramon, Ramon, are you ready? Ramon, are you ready? <laughs> Let's do it, sir. <laughs> From Vegas in the U.S. all the way to Canada. Jonathan, <laughs> how, about, how about we do the lyrics first, just so, you know, we can kind of see it, kind of show it. Is, are you cool with that? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll do the lyrics without the beat, okay? Because uh, Jonathan, uh, he, he's right, so it might go in and out on his end, on his uh, headphone. Um, and then, so I'll read mine, then Jahada will read hers. I'll, I'll kind of, I'll read the chorus once, but then uh, when we do the beat, that's when we'll go through it. Just remember, you know, I, I write a lot. I'm not a professional MC, but I do, uh, you know, I have sold some albums here and there, okay? But Jonathan, he's a DJ in Global G13. She's new to this, too. <laughs> I'm very new. <laughs> but it's all about having fun. I'm a microbiologist, not a rapper. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I have a degree in business management. I'm not a rapper, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you guys might say, okay, in episode two, we gave you guys tips on uh, financial wellness and different things you can do to become more, you know, financial aware. And, and plus, again, because of uh, April uh, is Financial Literacy Awareness Month, 
This one is about workshop one because a lot of people still haven't went to our workshop on Zoom. But when you go, this is how these lyrics were formulated. So basically, I'll read them just uh, because when we when we say them for the verse, um, you might not be able to catch everything. So I'll just scroll down. So let me see real quick. And OK, so basically, I am a wisdom. OK, so set it off from the top because nothing's really funny. Is money controlling you or do you control money? Welcome to the workshop. You start as an amateur. End of this program, be your own money manager. Don't just smile for the camera. This knowledge, we grab it. First workshop, we learn the successful habits of the people struggling days turn sunny. Got to put in the work, find and save more money. Understand investments and how to build wealth. Protect and preserve your money like no one else. Think about that piggy bank that's sitting on shelf. Now you know what to do once the cards are dealt. And then our course is going to go workshop one, increase the cash flow. Learn debt management so you don't, you don't, know. don't throw your don't money, throw out your the money window. out the window. Save and, and invest and watch, and watch your wealth. Wealth. Uh, <laughs> I like okay. that. That's good. All right. And then, then Global G13, she got verse two. You ready, Jada? Ooh, I suppose. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Rely on self and go for what you know. Learn debt management, increase your cash flow. Get with the trainer to learn the mission. The, to revolutionize the industry is the vision. Get to know the elements from Trainer Academy. Build and protect wealth for all families. Must realize we're not far from ascending. Move from insecurity to financial independence. One step in the right direction, we make strides. We got to do it right. We got to do it with pride. Move on one accord like the electric slide. Learning money is a journey, so enjoy the ride. Yeah, hey. <laughs> Learn that management so you don't owe. Don't owe. Yep. Don't throw your money out the window. <laughs> Save and invest, invest and your wealth. wealth. Bro. <laughs> bro, bro. And, and got verse three. You ready, John? All right. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, He's uh, a, uh, 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 Barry White. Um, <laughs> right, Barry White. <laughs> Hello, baby. <laughs> so welcome to the VIP reserve seats. Okay. Stage one to your financial goals worksheets. <laughs> Cost without goals that you can see on paper. You'll keep procrastinating, saying you'll do things later. And if that happens, might as well stay asleep. Because it's not how much money you make, but what you keep. That can be deep, like student loans in college. Yeah. Money isn't the greatest wealth. Applied knowledge. The rhymes we spoke, just remember these quotes. Income to save to invest equals wealth. But income to debt to spend equals broke. Right. It's no joke. Stay on point like spokes. Provide the people the peace of mind and hope. Right. Financial literacy don't want no smoke. Because we bring the fire that provokes the choke. We can see things changing like kaleidoscope, a notation for duration like a music note. All right. <laughs> Workshop one, increase your cash flow. Learn that management. Don't, don't, don't throw your money out the window. Save it. Save it. Invest and watch, watch your wealth grow. grow. Here you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what you guys think? <laughs> Not the kaleidoscope. <laughs> kaleidoscope, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we try to get creative, try to keep it hip hop, right? Y'all did good. Very catchy. The the um the verse is what is that? The uh the not course. the verse. The course is very catchy. Yeah, <laughs> you guys did good. All right, you are you guys ready to hear it with the beat? Yes. Okay. Do it. This is where it won't, this is where trouble. It won't sound. It's gonna be off. We already wait. Know that. Wait, Omori, real quick, take our picture because some people said they got to get off. Okay, hold on. Give, give us like two minutes and then you guys get off. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because we're going to run through it real quick. All right, hold on. Let me uh, try to do the screen. So let me show my. Okay, hold on. Let me. If you guys can show your faces, please. Yeah, if you guys can show picture. your face, that'd be cool. Uh, gallery view, boom. Just real quick, just real quick, and then you can turn it back off. Yeah, we can All right. be on the gram. And then, so. and then if you guys got a quick second, just uh what's up, boss man? There go my nephew right there. That's my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up, You're man? Here, your, mom, yeah. your mom is about to lay down some verses. Wait, we oh, still, we cut it out. We just gonna Super take a hot. picture. We just gonna Super take a hot five. 
Yeah, okay. She she definitely hot fire, but here we go. We about to we about to drop. You guys take the picture real quick. Okay, this, picture. this is for young got guys. It. Uh Jonathan got it. Just send it to all to everybody. And uh he was, oh, he's part of Young Guns, so you guys take the picture. This is part of our homework assignment. Our homework assignment. Okay. All right. All right, John, are you ready? You ready to do this? Woo, I'm gonna try, Jesus. All right, all right. <laughs> this is, this is Lord, what, uh, help us. Original hip hop. Please <laughs> yeah, so need to help me because I'm like, oh we. <laughs> This is how we close out each episode. So you guys hang in there. It's only like two, minutes, two or th two and a half minutes, probably. I don't. I didn't even time it. But here we go. I'm gonna share the screen. Or do you, you need me to share the screen, or you guys got the lyrics already? I got no, with the screen. With the screen. Oh, everybody else probably want to see it. And yeah, they want to sing along. They want to sing along in the chorus. Want to sing along? Yeah. Okay, Jonathan got the voice. I got the voice right here too. It ain't no problem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Ramon, you ready? Ramon, you ready for this? Let's do it. All right, all right. Okay, here. Let me let me let me uh, share right here before everybody gotta go. We appreciate everybody getting on. This is the way we're gonna close it out. Uh, let me see if I can scroll back. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, you guys ready? They're gonna beat. Let me turn. It. Make sure it's not too loud, right? <coughs> all original. All original. <laughs> One, two. It's kind of slow, but I can still flow with it. Set it all from the top, cause nothing's really funny. Is money controlling you or do you control money? Welcome to the workshop, you start as an amateur. End of this program, be your own money manager. Don't just smile for the camera, this knowledge we grab it. First workshop, we learn the successful habits of the people struggling days. Turn sunny, gotta put in the work, finally save more money. Understand investments and how to build wealth, protect and preserve your money like no one else. Think about that piggy bank that's sitting on shelf. Now you know what to do once the cars are dealt. Workshop, Workshop one, increase your cash flow. Cash flow. Learn debt management. Don't throw your money out there. Baby, best. Watch your mouth go. Workshop one, increase your cash flow. Learn debt management. So you don't, don't, don't owe. Don't throw your money out the window. Baby, invest and watch your mouth go. Rely on self and go for what you know. Right. Learn debt management. Increase your workflow. Ooh, cash flow. Get with the trends to learn the mission to revolutionize the industry is the vision. Get to know the elements from Trainer Academy. Build and protect wealth for all families. We must realize we're not far from ascendance. Move from insecurity to financial independence. One step in the right directions. We take strides. We got to do it right and do it with pride. Move on one accord like electric slide. Learning money is a journey to enjoy the ride. Don't throw your money out the window. Save and invest and watch your wealth grow. One more time, Jonathan. Go. Learn debt management so you don't owe. Don't throw your money out the window. Save and invest and watch your wealth grow. Okay, kick it, Jonathan. Show what time it is. So welcome to the VIP reserved seats. Stage one to your financial goals worksheets. Right. Cost without goals that you can see on paper. But keep procrastinating saying you'll do things later. And if that happens, might as well stay asleep. Because it's now watch money you make, but you how what you keep. That can be deep like student loan in college. Maybe it isn't the greatest wealth applied knowledge. The rhymes we spoke, just remember this quote. Income to save to invest equals wealth, but income to debt to spend equals broke. It's no joke, stay on point like spokes. Provide the people a peace of mind and hope. Financial, uh, financial illiteracy don't want no smoke because we bring the fire but provides the choke. We can see things changing like kaleidoscope, a notation for duration like a music note. Hey. 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 Don't throw, don't throw your money out the window. Watch your wealth grow. Yeah. All right. Uh -oh, okay. What you guys think? What you guys think? That's fun. <laughs> good show. Good show. All right. All right. All right. So you guys got the knowledge. Hopefully, uh, you guys got entertained. You learned some stuff. 
you know, hopefully you share and it might make a difference in your family or somebody else you might know. So just keep sharing. We appreciate everybody for joining. Keep the knowledge going. And we'll be back for another That's episode. Power. Power. All right. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. It was fun. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Love you, baby.